So let's talk about oxytocin and dopamine. So if you're interested in getting oxytocin nasal spray because you think it may help with dopamine or your social connection, maybe you have a little anhedonia, which this will probably help. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Ryan. And this is the Thunder Channel on Nootropics, on TRT, on biohacking, and on male performance. Please subscribe to the channel because, hey, bro, I know you're going to love the content, so just hit the sub button now. And, hey, bro, you either owe me a like or you don't owe me a like, okay? And it'll depend on if you get this right. So pick now, heads or tails, or we're going to flip this thing. Pick it, pick it, pick it. Let's go. All right, it landed on tails. Look, if you pick tails, you're good to go. You can proceed forward to the rest of the video because I am the gatekeeper. But if you picked heads and you got it wrong, do the right thing, bro. You owe your boy a like. Who are we? We are Cortex Labs, and we're predominantly a male performance company that specializes in globally shipped nootropic stacks. The most popular of them is the Torque Stack, which is down in the description of this video. I am a consultant on nootropics, TRT, energy optimization, and I just added boner fuel in <laughs> erectile dysfunction a rehab recovery consultation, which you can find at livecortex.com, down where all the consultations are and the menu. So uh, let's talk about oxytocin nasal spray. <laughs> Got some oxytocin nasal spray. I've actually had this on repeat for quite some time and I do use this stuff. It's uh, pretty interesting. Now, as you might imagine, and as you may have heard, oxytocin and what it does if you ingest it intranasally is it kind of turns on a sort of uh, bonding, like almost seemingly maternal, like you're probably gonna love your animals more. You're gonna be like more fatherly if you're a dude or maternal or motherly if you're a mom. And you know, it's essentially social bonding people bonding. That, that's one of the primary things that oxytocin is um, responsible for, right? If, if you dose oxytocin intranasally, you're going to feel pretty good and you're going to feel like more connected to the people around you, maybe even more sort of emotionally tuned in. And you may even be fucking lovey-dovey, bro. As Wikipedia states, oxytocin is a peptide hormone, a neuropeptide normally produced in the hypothalamus and released by the posterior pituitary. Oxytocin is released in the bloodstream as a hormone in response to sexual activity and during labor. It's also available in pharmaceutical form. In either form, oxytocin stimulates uterine contraction, the speed of the process of childbirth. In its natural form, it also plays a role in maternal bonding and milk production. Okay, somewhat irrelevant to us. So before we get into some of the dopamine properties of oxytocin, which I'm going to focus on in this video, in addition to some of this like bonding and like social connection sort of stuff. I want to just talk about my dose. So this is a 50 microgram per spray, like nasal spray bottle of oxytocin. I got this from nootropic source. This is like what I kind of repeat order. I like to dose hundred micrograms of it. So it's just two sprays at a time. You know, I may do this on a day where I'm taking oxytocin two or three times a day. What usually happens within about a half hour of dosing is I feel chill. Like I took an anxiolytic, right? You know, possibly something like a valerian root or a high dose l -theanine. Sometimes high dose new pet makes me feel really relaxed, but ultimately there's really nothing that I take nootropic wise that is comparable to the effect of oxytocin, you know, administered intranasally. It just makes me feel very cool and calm. Uh, more loving in general, like I'm more loving with my cat. I'm more, I would say, like calm and collected and less reactive when it comes to maybe conflict that may happen with other people. And I'm more kind of, I don't know, openly, warm heartedly fucking responsive. I don't know how you want to call it, guys. But like generally, generally, I just feel better. Uh, I'm better equipped to deal with social situations in which maybe empathy is involved or necessary, you know, and I generally feel kind of good. On the sexual department, it doesn't really affect me one way or the other sexually. It may make orgasms a little more intense or a little more pleasurable, but I mean, there's so many other mechanisms that, you know, are involved in that, like dopamine specifically, and also, you know, the ability for your junk to have proper signaling back to the spinal cord and like proper nerve signaling and blood flow and all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about oxytocin and dopamine. So if you're interested in getting oxytocin nasal spray, because you think it may help with dopamine or your social connection, maybe you have a little anhedonia, which this will probably help. I'm going to read uh, us a section from a paper titled Oxytocin, Motivation, and the Role of Dopamine. Recent studies show activation. I'll show you where we are. 
of oxytocin neurons thought to target the VTA, which is the ventral tegmental area. That's where a lot of your dopamine originates. Stimulates mesocortical limbic dopaminergic neurons. Oxytocin receptors and corresponding messenger RNA have been localized within the VTA. So where your dopamine is originating, there's a lot of oxytocin receptors. Now here's something really interesting. I'm gonna butcher this guy's name, so I'm not gonna say it. Extensive work done by name <laughs> and colleagues indicates that stimulation of dopamine receptors located on the cell bodies of oxytonergic neurons within the PVN, which is a paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus. It's just a part of the hypothalamus leads to penile erection in rats. Now, this is why some people take oxytocin nasal spray and get spontaneous erections or will get sexual benefits from it. Like, you know, the libido increase or the necessity to have sex or the desire to drive to have sex and also erections. Now, erections are super multifold and very complex, uh, but, you know, oxytocin oxytocin plays a role. Oxytocin injected into the ventral tegmental area, which is again where you make a lot of your dopamine, induces penile erection in rats and stimulates extracellular dopamine increases within the nucleus acumens, which receives dopaminergic projections from the VTA. So what you're doing by ingesting oxytocin is you're, you're doing a lot of things, but as it relates to dopamine, you may induce spontaneous erections, but at the same time, you're going to stimulate more dopamine to be around in the extracellular space, able to bind to you know the various D-like receptor sites in places like the nucleus acumens of your brain. Interestingly, if you give someone an oxytocin receptor antagonist, meaning something that blocks oxytocin from binding to its receptors, you diminish a dopamine agonist, which is a chemical that'll bind to dopamine receptors, ability to stimulate dopamine release in particular regions of your brain. Again, specifically the nucleus acumens. You also, if you antagonize oxytocin receptors, you diminish the pro-erectile effect of dopamine. So what this basically means is, yeah, you're going to stimulate some dopamine release by taking oxytocin. At the same time, you're probably going to stimulate a better quality of erections, possibly spontaneous erections, possibly even libido. But again, I want to like be clear that that, that is so multifold and it depends on a variety of factors, right? I mean, you know, I, people on Reddit, like in the erectile dysfunction the thing are like, man, I, you know, I have ED and whatever. It's like, but none of them ever mentioned their testosterone levels. It's like, hey, bro, like everything is connected and you have, a, you know, you got to have all this stuff straight. Now, interestingly, for females, so I can't talk about, I can't speak on every female, but you know, there's a particular female that I know who have, who has dosed this oxytocin nasal spray, and she says it makes her extremely horny and like vaginally sensitive. So it's increasing sensation, you know, in her female parts and also making her very interested in sex. So probably via the dopaminergic action, maybe there's some other action happening within the physiology of a female that, you know, I, I, I've yet to elucidate or whatever, it's probably somewhere out there in the research, but suffice to say, if you're a female, and you dose oxytocin, you're probably going to get sexual benefits, maybe even more so than a man would. I can say that in my uh, consulting work with people and dealing with anhedonia, which is one of the main things that I've been uh, contracted, if you will, to resolve in many, many men over the course of many, many years, oxytocin seems to help. It's not the, you know, the end all be all. And it certainly isn't the cure to anhedonia. But when people are dosing oxytocin in the presence of anhedonia, they tend to have a lot better spectrum of emotions, whereas before dosing, or in the regular state, they're basically, you know, anhedonic and numb and don't really feel pleasure for things. So oxytocin may be a good tool in the arsenal, right, to sort of take as a symptom relief strategy, not necessarily a cure, not a cure, but a symptom relief strategy. Now, one thing to keep in mind about dosing oxytocin is I don't believe in my professional opinion that you should be dosing it consistently. Like you shouldn't be dosing it every day and you shouldn't make it like a regular part of your routine because what you are going to do by administering exogenous or outside of your body oxytocin is you are going to shut down your endogenous oxytocin production. There's no question about that. That's in the scientific literature. And so it's like, yeah, would your regular oxytocin bounce back after you stop dosing oxytocin? Probably, but that's just not something that I would want to mess with because oxytocin is very, very closely tied in, not only in the hypothalamus, but in the pituitary. And it, it, like it has an interaction with prolactin as well, which you know has a, a very cl closely tied relationship with dopamine. So you just want to dose the stuff sparingly. If you're going to get some intranasal oxytocin, maybe take it once, twice, three times a week or something, and then make sure you're cycling off because you don't want to completely shut down your endogenous, your internal 
oxytocin production, which you will definitely if you're continuously dosing oxytocin. Overall, like what I think this is, is a useful tool to get in a good mood. It's a useful tool for some guys to sort of induce that like a uh, penile reflex, like you just have like normal junk reflexes like spontaneous erections that that does happen for some guys again that's all situationally dependent dependent on hormones dependent on dopamine depending on blood vessels and all these things you know in your junk uh stimulates libido for some guys but predominantly the overarching effect you're going to get from recreationally using intranasal oxytocin is that connected bonded kind of feeling and that feeling like you're just calm and chill and in a good mood, right? It, it's sort of fun to do. Or in any situation where I think you're going to need to be empathetic or you want to be, whether it's with your animal, or your wife, your kid or whatever, like it, it's for most people, it's going to kind of turn on that, that state of being where you're like, you're more emotionally connected to other human beings, which is a really, really important thing. I think you're going to find that people that are really loving and people that are really warm when you're around them, like you can tell, right? Some people just have a bad vibe and other people you feel like they're really warm and you have a good vibe around them, they're probably making more oxytocin or at least adequate oxytocin, whereas the former is probably not. All right, I wanted to mention to you guys that I officially, as I said in the beginning, I officially created an, an erectile dysfunction consultation. This is a highly, highly targeted program that you can get at livecortex.com. Uh, it will be a 20 minute fact finding call with me. And then it will be me putting together through online document generation, a targeted protocol for your particular situation. Like what is your situation? Is your test low? Probably dopamine low. Is there blood vessel issues in your junk? Do you need to enhance sensitivity? Do you need to increase the function of the dorsal nerves and the pedendal nerve and that substance? sort of spinal cord, brain, junk interaction. You know, erectile dysfunction is very, very complex. It's not just about the hormones. It's it's about a lot. And people like to, like as I said recently on a short, people like to separate libido from erections. No, they're not one and the same, but they're not entirely different. In fact, when erection quality is really good, libido tends to follow via a lot of the intrapenile neurotransmitter signaling, as well as that communication via the healthy nerves and blood vessels to the spinal cord, to the brain, back to the junk, et cetera. So I've created an erectile dysfunction rehab recovery consultation. It is now live and you can book me in under a minute at livecortex.com. I got a bunch of other consultations. Now there is a full on TRT protocol optimization. Now we just had general biohacking before. Now there is a TRT protocol optimization consultation that is specific for that. So if you're on TRT and need to get your protocol straight, book me, you can do that in under a minute at livecortex.com. You can find all the rest of our stuff at livecortex.com or down in the description below including the torque nootropic stack, six to eight hours, clean stimulant energy, motivation, positive mood benefits. Go by torque down below. All right, everybody, appreciate you being with me. And hey, if you got the heads or tails things wrong, you owe your boy a like. Hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. It really makes a difference. And if you liked anything I said in the channel, hit the sub button. I'd really appreciate that too. And you're going to love the channel. All right, everyone. Talk to you next time.